I told them to drop dead. You wouldn't think it, but for a game that looks so chaotic, Necrodancer works because of the simple principles it's built upon. And it's a philosophy that dates back to the game's inception. The crazy idea of blending rhythm with roguelikes wasn't a gimmicky way to stand out, but the product of simple and rational problem solving. Ryan Clark and Brace Yourself Games wanted to make a turn-based roguelike that was fair. The compromise resulted in a rapid turn-based system in which a turn only lasted a second. Clark likened it to move into a beat, so he played MJ's thriller in the background and well, the rest is history. As we said, this design attitude permeates throughout the whole game. There's a simple graphics that don't overcrowd the screen, or the fact that there's only four buttons that contains the fast and constant dancing. The alternating disco lights make it easier to skip to the beat, and building a rhythm multiplier into coin scoring as well as particular weapons and armor is simply genius. Necrodancer has a lot of complexity and strategy, though when broken down, its design is simple. Simply the best. Crypt of the Necrodancer lets you dance to your own beat by giving you so many different ways to shake it. Starting with the music, you can customise all the songs. As we found, not every song works. Whatever you choose needs to have a constant beat. But once we tried a song that did, specifically Sweet Dreams by Eurythmics, we were in awe. Playing the game to a song you know and love is just awesome, and the ability to change it up stops the music from getting repetitive in a game that is built to be replayed over and over. Also, if the Danny Baranowski soundtrack was somehow not enough, there is both a melody and metal remix of it to be unlocked. Moving on, the different characters that can be unlocked fundamentally change the game. Bard doesn't have to move to the beat, Eli has infinite bombs but no weapons, and Arya will die if she misses just one beat. Perhaps a seemingly minor feature is the ability to add or remove items from the in-game chests. It can more easily net you your favourite weapon or load up the chest with health regen if you fear you take too much damage. Lastly, you can play the game with a dance pad. It probably won't consume most of your playtime, but it's a fun option to have, and it epitomizes Necrodancer's commitment to giving players what they want. Through early access, they have curated a highly user-friendly experience that lets you change how you play into whatever song you like. Okay, we're cheating a bit here because this last point isn't really a point. It's just us listing off the other things we love about Necrodancer. We love how the shopkeeper busts out his vocal talents midway through the awesome songs. We love the monumental amount of weapons, armor, relics, spells and shrines that add a whole extra layer of strategy on top of the dance floor grooving. We love the story that at first appears superfluous, but it's full of deep lore and intrigue the more you explore. We love the mini bosses that make completing every stage an accomplishment. We also love the big bosses and the character and stage design of them. They're just phenomenal. Simply, we love Crypt of the Necrodancer. And that's why it's our game of the month for April. And why we recommend you put on your blue suede shoes and cut loose with Necrodancer. If you want more Necrodancer info, we suggest you check out this mini documentary Brace Yourself Games made on its development. Thanks guys for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie <laughs>